professional record, 39 victories, including 19 knockouts with three defeats from Mendoza, Argentina, the challenger, former WBA flyweight world champion, Juan Carlos Cotto. opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner wearing purple and officially weighing in at 111.6 pounds he's a three-time world champion his record 40 victories 22 wins by knockout only one defeat with four draws from Bacolo City Negros Occidental Philippines the former mini world champion and the reigning and defending WBO flyweight Champion of the world, Donny Alhas. attention and get Rebecca's attention as well. And we begin with Nietes landing his jab and delivering one right hand across the top, fighting at a major face. Nietes is, reminds me of you in certain ways, Andre. His, he's a disruptive fighter. He punches. His rhythm disrupts the other guy. He punches when the other guy doesn't want to engage. He disengages when the other guy wants to engage. That's the name of the game. He's very efficient. And he only does what he has to. And so far, he has blocked every punch that Rebecco has tried. Blocking the body shots with his arms, blocking the upstairs stuff with his gloves. Rebecco, by my lights, hasn't really landed anything yet. CompuBox sees him at 1 for 11. Yet this will also quadruple and quintuple up on the jab at times. There's a lot of crafty things in there as the fight went. that Rebecca is trying to get to the body with wide-winging shots. And chances are, when he lets his hands travel out to the side like that, wings those shots, that Nietzsche is going to see them coming and pick them off with his defensive skills. Yeah, Nietzsche is definitely going to discipline Rebecca every chance that he gets. And Rebecca knows that. He mentioned that to us in the fighter meeting about how he can't get too over-anxious. He's a very aggressive fighter. He has a high punch count, but he knows that Nietzsche is a veteran. He knows that the is a natural counterpuncher as well. Already we see Rebecco has thrown 21 punches to this point in the first round. In his last fight, he came out firing 70, 75, 80 punches per round, and he's already been limited to a considerably slower pace tonight by the tactical effectiveness of Donnie Nietes. Right upstairs. 
hand. Stop the belly. Really good combination to the body that Veko landed, especially the right hand. But of course, Manny Pacquiao is not in the wild card gym these days. He's back in the Philippines practicing politics. Niente said that he and his trainer, Edwin Villamor, uh, got in some good work at the wild card and got some effective advice and help from Freddie Roach, but not from the Filipino adjunct to that uh, wild card team, uh, Marvin Sabodio. He also got some good rounds in with Brian Valori. He suffered an upset loss on the undercard here tonight. But fought a great fight. It was a, it was a great fight. Valoria suffered a bad, gruesome cut, I believe, in the 11th round. Uh, but the fight was pretty much decided at that point. The United States Olympian, brilliant prospect coming out, has had a bit of a hard luck career. Valoria has had an excellent career. Um, and yeah, a bit of a hard luck one. A popular fighter when he turned pro, an Olympian. An offensive fighter, a crowd pleaser, a good personality, and wasn't didn't become a dominant champion, but would have been an excellent fighter as he has been in any era. Great, great person. See, there you see the subtlety of Nietes. Not a lot, not a lot of big movements, but just enough to slip. He looks at what he wants to punch, but he won't take the shot now. He'll take it in the third or fourth round. That's a veteran tactic and a veteran move. Say, so great, Andre, that you cited the subtlety of it. I was just getting ready to say, look at the subtle head movement by Nietes, who doesn't have to do much to make Rebecca miss. And as you said that, he slipped the punch. He, he slipped and picked the punch with his left glove. He landed a jab right when Rebecca was trying to disengage. He's just a very crafty guy. These are the kinds of moves that don't necessarily catch the eye of that many people in the arena. But the opponent, when he watches Nietes do that, he's stuck with having to say to himself, you know, this guy's really good. Uh, I, I'm not able to do what I want to do. Jim, my predecessor in this seat, the great Larry Merchant, used to talk about a fighter in the pocket like this. This is called the pocket where you're in punching range. Like a great quarterback. The blitz is coming and things are flying all around and calmly sidesteps and delivers the ball. And Yetes is like a really seasoned quarterback in the pocket. Look at that. Well-chosen body shot by Nietes while Rebecca was missing upstairs. And now Rebecca comes back with a couple of body shots of his own. But in the closing seconds of round two, already by CompuBox count, Nietes is doubling Rebecca in landed punches. Donnie Nietes is ring nickname. Tagalog word for two represented a major emotional display for him. That shows you that he loves the snakes. Uh, you know, I, I bring this metaphor up from time to time, or an analogy up between boxing and chess. And the best chess books, I think, teach by showing you a master versus every different level of opponent, from beginner to expert. And the most interesting games are the master against the expert, because you see the subtle differences. And in this fight so far, you've seen why Nietzsche has been a long-reigning belt holder. Because in against an expert fighter, a world-class fighter, there's a subtle difference in terms of the depth of his skill, Andre. The way he picks punches, the calmness in the pocket, the countering, the pacing. He is... he's a master. He's a master. And you only get that through experience. Sometimes bad experiences and sometimes good experiences. And in Nietzsche's case, He's had a lot more good experiences than he's had bad. I mean, he's on a 14-year winning streak. Um, he's the longest reigning Filipino champion in boxing history. That's for a reason. One loss in his career, and it took place in September of 2004. Since then, all wins other than four different draws. And as much as um, flack as I give the sanctioning bodies, and they deserve it, the fact is, if you're a long-reigning belt holder, that makes title def mandatory after mandatory. Chances are you're going to have an off night. Absolutely. Chances are that against another world-class opponent, without a lot of fanfare, you can come in underprepared, or you, you, you just didn't have it that night. And Nietzsche hasn't had that. He's been consistent every time, been able to overcome world-class opponents. 
consistency in this game is definitely underrated. Sometimes we as boxing fans, we get excited. We get excited with the, you know, the shooting star, the guy that's making a big splash or, you know, making a lot of noise in the moment, and that's fine. But show me the guy that has success against top competition over an extended period of time. That's the guy that gets me excited. Well, and that's, it was consistency over a long period of time. It was 46 consecutive wins with 38 knockouts that lifted Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez to the number one ranking pound for pound in the world coming into calendar 2017. But as his experiences with Teresa Ketsoro and Visai show, there's somebody out there in this overwhelmingly vast and variety-filled world of boxing. There's somebody out there who has your number. And you just never know when you're going to run into that guy. Chocolatito Gonzalez could never have really known before he first fought Teresa Ketsoro and Visai that this was the guy. Particularly with pressure fighters in the lighter division tend to age very quickly once they hit about 30. Which makes it interesting to see what'll happen. He is landing 13% of his total punches by CompuBox count. If you look at Nietzsche's last three opponents combined, they landed 14.5% of their punches. So in other words, he's this good defensively against just about anybody he faces. And that means that he doesn't have to do all that much offensively to be the winner of most of his rounds. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, I got a 3-0, 30-27, to to Don Inietes. I, I got to tell you, Jim, he's a very good fighter. I never saw him before, you know, live, but boy, I'll tell you, he's an excellent fighter. He punches real good in the middle of the ring. He keeps the fight where he wants it, you know. His ring generalship is excellent. And he outpunches Juan Carlos Rebecca in just about every round that I've watched so far in this fight. 3-0, uh, to nothing, Don Inietes. Max Gellerman compared him to Andre Ward. There can be fewer, higher compliments than that. There but can in a be very, very few. In a very specific way. He doesn't remind me of Andre as an overall fighter, but in the sense that he dictates what's happening. He frustrates his opponent by doing what the opponent doesn't want to happen, by engaging and disengaging with a rhythm that upsets his opponent. In that respect, he's very much like Andre, I think know anything about Riveco, like we mentioned earlier in the telecast, Riveco is a two-fisted fighter. He punched with volume, he throws a lot of punches, and he's aggressive. But you see Nietes, who's the consummate professional, he's the veteran. His nickname is Snake. He's almost like a snake charmer, where he's very deceptive. He's taking the punch count of, Niet of, of Riveco, excuse me, down, and Riveco, in so many cases, is shell-shocked. He can't do what he wants to do, and I don't even think he realizes that right now. And yet Nietzsche is right in front of him, and he can't land the punches. And it also means that Nietzsche doesn't have to take any chances on offense to be offensively in control. He's landing 23% of his punches. That's not high, but it's enough to double what Rebecca is able to do. And a veteran like Nietzsche, you'll see him slowly start to pick it up. He'll throw just a little bit more each round until he gets the shots that he wants to get. And you'll look up, and he'll either score a knockout or you'll look up and the fight will be over and he's won most of the rounds. That's how it goes. I, I don't know what the booing is about. I, I don't find this to be a, a boring fight. A little bit one-sided, obviously, but if you like boxing craft, you're seeing a lot of it here. And, and it's well, not of course, he's not moving his hands. Hands punches are flying. If the ticket buyers come from the boxing cultures that spawn the fighters on the card, Argentina, the Philippines, Mexico, uh, they expect to see aggressive fighters with an offensive bent. That's what they're used to. More risk-taking. Exactly. Up at the bell. Up at the bell. That's probably the genesis of the round throw. And Mietes has more than doubled him in terms of landed punches. So while the crowd may be booing because they hoped for something more spectacular in terms of give and take, we're looking again at mastery. And we don't know how the rest of the fight is going to play out. There's a lot of fight left, but if I had to guess, I think Rebecca was thinking right now that everything I heard about Donnie Nietes is true. If I had to guess, I think the booze might be louder in round eight and nine. I, I like what, I mean, I don't know. I see two guys throwing punches. You tell me when there's a significant break in the action. Look, here comes Rebecca. His hands are moving. Nietes' hands are moving. They're just also both playing defense. Right now, I'm focusing on the accuracy of Nietzsche's left hook. I, I don't see any holding. I don't 
see any running. I don't see any long periods of inaction. Good fight so far. Once again, Antis ducks and slips a few punches and sneaks in a left hook. If you watch Nietes, even when he's under attack, he stays calm the whole time. And for the young fighters watching at home, that's something to look at. It's not always the flashy defensive move, but it's the subtleties, it's the small things, and keeping calm under composure. Excuse me, keeping composure under fire. And Nietes has done that this whole fight. Rebecca spent four years on the Argentine national team with Lucas Matisse and Marcus Maidana. And acknowledge that uh, they are the kinds of fighters that Argentine fans love to watch and that he, in effect, loves to watch. We asked him if there's any chance that the long-dreamed-about fight between Maidana and Matisse could ever conceivably take place. And he smiled and said, well, for Maidana, that would have been about 100 pounds ago. So, <laughs> unlikely it's ever going to happen. See, what the fans want here is one of these guys to just for, to lose their discipline, to just start winging shots. But it's actually a better fight than that. Both fighters are remaining disciplined even when their opponent, in particular Nietes, is doing things to frustrate them. And it's tough to give Rebecco some type of game plan right now to get to Nietes because, one, he's the shorter fighter, so he can't box on the outside. If he comes to inside and starts to open up, Nietes is waiting to counter. Rebecco's in a real tough spot right now in this fight. Yeah, this is hard to hit even when you're in close, in close quarters, he's still hard to land. But that's what I mean. That's what Rebecco on paper wants to be. But Nietes is comfortable inside. Look at the bell, guys. Look at the bell. Nietes landed 18 out of 79. And Juan Carlos Rebecco of Argentina landed 7 out of 53. We're at the Forum in Los Angeles looking at a couple of 112-pound fighters. The guy in the purple trunks. Tony Nietes is a champion in the division. Oh, hard left hook by Nietes. Follows it up with a two-punch combination. One of the subtle differences you can see in these two fighters, the, the master versus the expert, you know, Nietes as, as the master. There's less wasted movement. Rebecco, you can see, in order to establish his rhythm, is making bigger motions, and, and oftentimes for no direct apparent reason, Andre. Whereas Nietes' movement, every move seems to be for a purpose. Yeah, that's Rebecco's, that's his rhythm. That's how he gets himself going. It's almost like a telegraph where he's letting you know that the attack is coming, and Nietes being the fighter that he is, he can see that. And he'll stick a jab out, hup, slow down. He'll put a hook to the face or a jab to the stomach just to let Rebecca know, I see what you're doing, and I'm not going to let you get revved up and get started. And he's been doing that all night. But Rebecca's doing the right thing right now. He's going to have to sell out a little bit, be willing to get to get hit, to get his. Because if he stays back and allows Nietes to snake charm him, he's going to be on the end of Nietes' punches all night long. Right, and that's where, at a certain, early on, I think it's it's... You can't say it's unfair for the crowd to move because the crowd feels how they feel. They paid their money. They're entitled to express themselves. But eventually in this fight, if it continues this way, you're right. Rebecca, what he's doing, it's not working. It will be time to go to plan B. Which he's been doing this round. That's he's had some more success. That Rebecca left hook is one of the best punches he's landed in the fight. But he had to eat five or six good punches just to get in position to throw. Well, the difficulty with plan B oftentimes is it involves selling out. And it can hasten the fighter's demise. In order to give themselves a chance to actually win, they have to increase the odds that they get stopped or get beaten badly. Well, this is actually Rebecco's plan B. This is who he is. He's a two-fisted fighter, and he's aggressive, and he likes to throw a lot of punches. He went against his own nature, which was to lay back and try to think with, with a master thinker, and that's where he went wrong. This round, this is who Juan Carlos Rebecco really is. As one of the greatest of all boxing publicists, Mike Tyson said, in boxing, you got to bring it to get it. That isn't exactly what he said, but that's the point. One of James Tony's favorites. 
Here's the replay. Here we see Niente squat down. He's looking. Short right hand. Missed the left hook with that right hand. Had Viveco out on his feet. He's out right now. And Niente knows it. And he's coming back after this round and trying to finish the show. And now the between rounds clock has stopped. Short right hand from Niente is right on the button. And now the between rounds clock is going to roll again. As the referee momentarily stopped it, not quite, and he got extra time between rounds to recover. He's still out on his feet, even with the extra time that he was given. He's still out. He does, his legs don't know where the canvas is. See, he doesn't, he does, his balance is shot. His that, legs are gone. That's why he's running like that to try to get his leg. But watch the veteran. He's going to start to pick it up, and you'll see him as aggressive as he's been all night. And he landed a lead right hand flush. As he now looks for the next opportunity. Coach just has huge heart. But now Nietes has a sitting duck in front of him. Yeah, and I think this is highly questionable for the California Commission. Yeah. As Rebecco has been allowed to come back in and fight oh, at a moment when he was obviously six, compromised. Seven. Hey, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. His corners come allow to him to continue. His legs are not obeying his it's right not hand. Hand. It's not everybody. And now somebody in the corner is waving a white flag and intelligently so. What's the point? That would have ended ugly if another look at the end. So Nietzsche's knows that Rebecca's hurt. So now you start to see him put some power behind those punches. He commits more knowing that Rebecca's hurt. He closes the distance. He goes to the body with both hands and tries to finish up top. And Rebecca's done. He's finished. You know, Andre, we saw a good young fighter a couple months ago. Kevin Farmer should watch Nietes because he is the culmination of the of experience on top of the kind of talent and skill.